Um, you're very welcome to sorry today, Michael, Raymond and Cathy. Um, so first off, I'm sorry that you um, are forced to come here to, f to fight for the rights of, of your loved ones um, endlessly for decades, um, being the voice of the loved ones that you've lost and that you know, the state structures have failed to give you justice and give you the truth of what um, all that happened and to acknowledge the wrong that was done. Um, and I suppose, my apologies, I was late for I was in the Shannon, but I listen to your, your contribution and a really, really powerful contribution. Um, and like, I fundamentally believe, believe that there is no hierarchy of victim. And when we speak about victims, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't put a colour on that victim. I, I, I look at the, <coughs> the heartache, I look at the pain, and I look at the, the, the answers, that's, that, that the questions that aren't answered and the justice that isn't given and that doesn't have a colour. Um, and absolutely that, you, you know, the people that we have lost um, to those desperate times, and I know um, all deserve, all deserve the, the, the justice. And I think locally of, you know, Jean McConville and Tom Oliver, you know, um, who still to this day, we don't know all the truth. So that's just locally from where I come from in the Cooley Peninsula. And that, um, that cuts me deep, personally. Um, and you, you mentioned, Raymond, um, what, what we can do um, and what, what more Dublin can do. And as someone who has, you know, you, you've been involved in this for a long time, and I, I haven't, I've been, I suppose, a bystander and invested in it that way. You know, what more can Dublin do? Because we are absolutely against the, the, the amnesty proposals, completely against them. We believe in justice. We believe in getting the answers. Um, so what, in your view, can we do? Because I often feel, and we know that the British government tend to just, you know, Northern Ireland and, and things in Northern Ireland seem to only really matter when it's a, on a balance of power. Um, and they listen when there's a few votes here and there and they make action then and they send a few, you know, smiley faces over to us and says, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're on Northern Ireland's side and then slam down and, and bring forward these legacy um, proposals. And here we are in Dublin and the Irish government feeling, I, I genuinely feel useless <laughs> against that. So from, from your point of view, what can we do? Because we're more than happy to do is anything we can do. Yeah. Well, I've been in court many, many times from 2007, since the Ballas report was released by Barney Nill alone, the lovely lady. I've sat in front of three judges, and for the barristers or QCs, for the PSNI or RUC, I've turned around and told the three judges, we can't give you documents, they're too sensitive. And these judges have turned and says, let us read them, we'll tell the families what they yeah. will let them hear. We'll take them behind closed doors. They give them plenty of weeks, we'll give you 12 weeks. No reply. Give them another 13 weeks, no reply. It still hasn't, and that's six years ago. So they're telling judges yeah. that we believe who are meant to be representing the truth and justice for our families, and we're not getting it. So I just feel that we're really being let down. You are. Big time. And you can ask me, did I put my trust in the system? No, I don't. I don't put my trust in the system because it's gone on for years. I've lost a lot of family through the troubles, a lot of family, and I just want some sort of justice. Well, I think most people in Northern Ireland now want to live in peace. They want this to go away, but there's certain elements within the communities that are keeping it very much under the table now, actually, because of funding and. But they still have a chokehold on their communities and they are still running their communities. And they might be wearing suits and meeting all different kinds of people, but at night time they're giving out orders to destroy their own areas. Um, I personally am at the stage where I'm fighting it very hard to believe that I'll ever get justice for my sister and my nephew's murder. And just because they keep putting things back and putting things back. And they've done that until my father died in my sister's case. And I have carried it on from his death. And I really don't want my children to have to do it. I want 
things answered. And a court case. And what comes out in the court case, I will accept. But I don't want this feeling that the police, politicians all know, and they're just keeping it under the table. And I do believe the politicians know what's going on in Northern Ireland, within the unionist community. I do believe they know what is going on. They're the ones that are meeting these paramilitary leaders in the guise as community development. So they know exactly what's going on in the ground. And the ordinary working class people are being left to manage and fight on their own. Lauren, a point I want to make before I apply that is, in case people watching this interpret my words as a certain sectarian way, you know, I have no interest in religion or political parties, right? But I don't class somebody who wants a united Ireland or who is someone who has Republican beliefs as my enemy. It's a sort of political beliefs. And people should realise that. You know, we hear people will see what happened to Simon Cole when they come to Bel come up to Belfast. I don't want people in Dublin and, and the Republic of Ireland thinking all Protestants and all unions support that. Because 99 percent of people were disgusted with it. But some of the people involved with it are people, and we can speak again about this here, uh, receive government funding, and I have no doubt from the information received that uh, they get some from, from Dublin. There's a large group, and I'm not going to details there, but a group in my own unit, in this community. And I'm looking here at the documents given to me just yesterday. The whole board on it, a good part of the board is UVF lifers. Other people that sits on it are relatives of senior UVF men. And other ones are UVF men. There's no community workers on it. And there's uh, the, f the figures here in front of me, the money that they, they receive. You know, so those things that need, need, need to stop. But there needs to be more interaction between people from Northern Ireland and the people that, that sit in power here. Because the, uh, the way forward is through people working with each other. Yeah. I criticise uh, Marie Lou. I was criticise any politician. I believe, and she could turn around and have a reason for saying so. It could be a, a leader of an our political party. But because I criticise the people, a some from a political party who wants to unite in Ireland, or someone who, who wants to remain part of the union in Belfast, uh, it, and just because I criticise, uh, I don't agree with the words that she used are, are from the DUP. It doesn't mean they're my enemy. Absolutely not. You know, the way it's come across is you have to have their opinion. And you know, I'll, I'll say this quickly, in, in, in agreement there, completely agree with what the other two friends have said. In Belfast, I, I have numerous death, death threats. UVF made a bomb trying to blow me up. Was the IRA trying to kill me? Or the INLA trying to kill me? It was people within my own community, the same people that murdered my son of the organisation. And it's amazing because I spoke with Sam and Colton yesterday and invited him to come to Belfast again. And I got a photo taken of him, shaking his hand, because I want to show the people that he's not our enemy. I want to show that he's welcome up there. And someone from a Eunice community like myself can go into Belfast and go up and uh, people call it an Isla story and have a paint on it. But the Shankill Road and people in the Shankill Road are good people. But unfortunately, there's people in the Shankill Road. If I was sitting in the pub, some young lad be waiting coming out when I go out with son off shotgun. And our unionist politicians would say that's a terrible murder and forget about me. Yeah. Our unionist politicians refuse to go against these people. Yeah. And it's time they did. <coughs> Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Just as I was say thank you. Um, it's powerful to listen to you. Um, and 
it just uh, demonstrates again that you know the legacy of your hurt and the legacy of that trauma continues on. And Cathy, you illustrated so well of how you want those answers not to bring them into the generations after that um, 50 years time that we're remembering your loved ones and not having answers. And you know the justice cannot be dismissed because it's difficult. The truth's difficult. Yeah.